Hi guys, welcome back to another DI try video. So today I'm going to be trying to DIY some books. So I'm going to be doing some book binding and they are not just any old book. These are going to be some autograph books for my nieces for when we go to Disneyland Paris, which is something I am so excited about and I can't wait for the trip and hopefully these books work out and they manage to survive the trip but I'll definitely let you know either way. So first of all everything that I've learned about bookbinding pretty much has come from a channel called Sea Lemon so thank you so much for all of your useful information and I'll make sure to leave a link in the description below. So those are a couple things that I realised during my research. There are several different ways that you can create a book and different bookbinding methods. I'm going to go with what I felt was the easiest for this project, which I believe is called perfect binding, which involves cutting down your pieces of paper, smushing them together and applying some glue. So you don't have to poke holes, you don't have to do any kind of stitching, there's no kind of folding the paper and creating your little like booklets that you then kind of pile together and none of that. So <laughs> this felt like an entry level kind of bookmaking place for me to start and We'll see how it goes. So for my supplies, I picked up some paper. This is a pretty, I'm gonna say medium weight paper and it is brightly colored because if you're making your own Disney autograph book, then why not have bright colored paper? All of the signatures will be in like a black chunky Sharpie anyway. So I'm pretty sure they'll all show up. So that should be fine and it's just fun. So when it comes to making a book, it's really handy to have a book press. And this is essentially a contraption that you can put the paper in and kind of smush it together so it's held really tight and then apply the adhesive so everything kind of holds in place nicely. And I did a little bit of research and they seem to be quite expensive. So I'm looking down at my notes, I'm trying to remember. So <laughs> I found um, it kind of ranged from about 40 pounds to about 60 pounds, which is roughly um, which is roughly kind of for the £40 one would be roughly around kind of $50 um, and that's kind of pricey <laughs> so I did notice that there were a few tutorials on how to DIY your own. So I remembered when I was younger I was so very jealous of something that my cousins had and it was a flower press so that's what I went and picked up this is it here and I'm fulfilling a lifelong ambition of owning a flower press by buying this because as I say, I was so jealous of the one that my cousins had. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. So I went ahead and got this online and this was, it was a really strange price. It was like 10 pounds. 94 pence or something like that on Amazon with free shipping. So I'll link this one in the description below. And that is a awful lot cheaper than buying a book press. And from what I can gather, it seems to be the same thing. So the key thing is these little kind of doodads here. So we can unscrew them. And once I get them all unscrewed, come on. You can lift it up and you can place your pages inside and then you can kind of tighten it up with these little bits here so you can twist it around until it's nice and tight and everything's held together and you can certainly DIY one of these and there are tutorials online you can pick these up at um, you know kind of a, a hardware store I guess um, a DIY shop and um, I can't remember the name of them, but I'm pretty sure they're not too expensive. And I believe in the tutorial, it's like a chopping board that's used, but I just went ahead and got this, um, what's it called? Flower press. And the nice thing about it is that on the opposite side, there's these little notches. So everything kind of sits nice and flush. So I felt like a really good kind of bargain hunter and like I'd found a really good hack when I picked this up. But then I think where I maybe got had a little bit was I picked up this uh, book binding glue from Hobbycraft. That's where the cardstock's from that I'm using today as well. And it comes in this really nice bottle with like a little applicator. So I think that's going to be fun. Um, but I'm pretty sure this is just standard PVA glue. So this was £4 or around $5 for 100 mils, whereas I could have got 
three times as much for £1.50, so kind of $2. And I'm pretty sure it's the same stuff. I had a look at it to see the ingredients, um, and it is listed as a multi-purpose white PVA glue, or PVA-C glue. I don't know what the difference is. Um, so it's a strong transparent, um, well, wait, hold on. <laughs> So it's a strong glue and it's transparent when it's dry and remains flexible. So I hear that that is really important whenever you are bookbinding. You need to have a glue that remains flexible when dry. I guess because of all the page turning, you want everything to kind of stay together nicely. Um, and it is also solvent free, which again, which again is important when you're working with paper and you want something to last for a really long time. So I'm feeling confident. I think this is going to work. Let's get right in. So the first thing we'll need to do is find the center of the paper in both directions so I can cut all these pieces down. I am gonna go ahead and use a craft knife and a ruler today, but you could use your paper trimmer or if you have a really big paper trimmer that can cut a whole bunch of paper in one pass, then this would take no time at all. But I'm gonna go ahead and do it with a craft knife and a ruler. This particular ruler has a metal edge along one side, so it's really nice to work with a knife. It doesn't kind of scratch your ruler unless you use the wrong side and you chip a little piece away. So I'll use the metal side and just go ahead and cut this down. So I've sped you up for this bit here, but to find the center of my paper, I went ahead and folded it in half and then I lined up the edge of the ruler with that fold line and I'm just gently pulling the craft knife along the edge of my ruler. So I'm not applying too much pressure. I'm not really trying to like dig in and scrape through the paper. I found the easiest way to do this is to just take your time and to just gently pull the blade along the paper and let it cut through a couple sheets at a time and just keep moving the cut sheets out the way and working your way through. Once I'd done this in one direction, I went ahead and folded the paper in the other direction and cut each of my halves so I would have four equal piles. As I say, it doesn't take too much time at all and as long as you have a nice, fresh, sharp craft blade, you shouldn't have any problems. Any of those kind of raggedy edges you might end up with, we can fix and I'll talk about that further along in the video. Okay, so now we have all four of these cut. I'm gonna go ahead and Pick one of them and then glue that together and I'll do the rest of them off screen. So from what I can gather it is really important to make sure that all of your paper is lying nice and flat before you go ahead and put it into your um, into your book binder or between some heavy books whatever it is that you're using because I guess this is like the form that it's going to sit in after it's all glued together. So I'm making sure to use kind of the the non-cut edges to um, to stack it up because they were cut professionally and they are going to look kind of the smoothest and the flattest and I want to bind along this edge here because I want my autograph book to open this way so I'm going to go ahead and kind of make sure I'm happy with everything you can see my kind of couple of little jaggedy pieces here but as I said I'll fix that at the end it's no problem if you're better at cutting than I am, you might not have this issue. Um, but if you do, don't worry because we can fix it. So I'm grabbing my little clamp and I'm going to go ahead and hold everything together. So now everything's kind of locked in place and I can go ahead and put it inside this press. Okay. So I've opened up these little like wing nuts and I'm going to go ahead and pop this inside. So then I guess once everything's in there, I just tighten it up. So I'm kind of working my way around tightening everything up and this is where I think a proper kind of book press might be a little bit more sophisticated. Um, it will probably kind of tighten and add a bit more pressure. I don't know, I'm just guessing. Um, but I think my flower press version is going to work okay. I am finding that everything's kind of 
it's not really tightening up that much it's kind of just spinning so I'm working my way around each of the corners and trying to kind of add a little bit more pressure as I go but it might just be that a it's not going to get super tight, which might be a problem. It might just be that I haven't kind of spun everything round enough yet. Okay, so Dexter is in here with us now. So if you hear him kind of tapping around, that's that's what's going on. He's probably just going to just kind of stand by me here, trying to get cuddles and trying to climb on my knee. So I'm going to grab the glue and kind of open up the end and then add a thin layer onto the sheets and let that dry and then I'm going to repeat that process a couple times so I think um, I'm probably going to look at the video again but I think it said to add kind of three or four layers um, and just kind of really get I'm not sure how thin this layer was hopefully that is not critical maybe I'll wipe off some of the excess I don't know how I feel about this little scraper. I think it's good in theory, but I think a brush is going to be better at making sure I'm kind of confident that I've got glue in all of those little kind of pieces of paper, I guess, <laughs> kind of make sure I've got it sunk down into each of those little crevices so everything sticks together really nicely. And yeah, yikes, I've scraped away a lot there. So I'm going to grab a... What am I grabbing? A brush. Let's see. That's, oh, oh, that works. So I'll go ahead and kind of wipe over this glue. Make sure it's really in there. I don't want this book to fall apart. I know I still have my Disney autograph book from when I was teeny tiny. So hopefully these guys will, these guys? <laughs> My nieces will keep theirs as well. And I think my paper's kind of ever so slightly off. I don't think it's shifted since I put it in the into the book binder. Um, Dexter, what? You want to go out now? Okay, I'm almost done. Um, so what was I even saying? Yeah, I don't want these to fall apart. I know I've had my book since I was teeny tiny, so... Hopefully this works. One of the bristles of my brush has got stuck in the glue. Maybe that'll just add some extra stability. Oh, look, you can see him there. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave this to dry. I'm gonna go give Dexter some attention. Then I'm gonna add another couple layers and then do everything again for the other four books. Okay, so all three coats are dry. Um, it didn't really take too long to dry. I just waited until the glue kind of turned from clear to, no, from trans... Texture's back. I just waited until the glue turned from kind of milky to completely clear. And this is it, I think. <laughs> So I think it's worked. I don't want to kind of play with it too much. I want to give it kind of a good like 24 hours to completely dry down. Um, it looks dry and it certainly seems to work, which is really exciting. Um, but I'm going to kind of leave it. Yes, I know. But what are you doing? Um, so I'm going to kind of leave it for 24 hours. I will kind of put it under some books just to keep it kind of pressed like this and let it dry complete, uh, completely before I go and add any kind of cover to this. So now that I have the books made, it's time to create some covers. And again, I'm just following advice that I got from Jennifer over at Sea Lemon. I will have a link in the description below to the videos that I watched. If you want to learn directly from the expert, I would highly recommend going and checking out that channel. But if you're enjoying the process, do stick around to see how these books turned out. So we're in voiceover mode and I'm trimming down some chipboard and I've trimmed it down to be slightly larger than the book so I can create a front cover, a back cover and also a spine. And it's really easy to cut this stuff. I have a, de a designated craft blade for my paper trimmer that I only use for chipboard or you can just use some scissors. So now I'm going to create some book binding paper and I'm going to use the iron. This is 
a very special day. <laughs> so I grabbed the iron and some fabric. I just picked up a bundle of fabric from my local craft store that I liked the colours and I'm using some heat and bond. This is almost like a um, double-sided adhesive that you iron into place. So I'm ironing that all over the back of this fabric and then I'll go ahead and peel away the backing sheet leaving the adhesive exposed and then to that adhesive I will lay some tissue paper and then I'll go ahead and reapply the heat with the iron and that will bond the tissue paper to the back of the fabric which means we have just created some book binding fabric. This whole process makes it easier to work with and makes it easier to stick the whole thing together to your book and I believe it also increases its durability but again go check out Sea Lemon's videos for the expert opinion on all of this. So now I'm tracing around each of the pieces, just making sure to leave a little bit of a gap between the front and the spine and then the back and the spine. And that will just help me to be able to open and close the book. And then I'm using my ruler to add an extra, um, I believe it's an inch all the way around the outside of this. And then I will trim out following that outside edge line. So then we've got enough material to wrap the book and to fold over the edges and hide them on the inside. To make those edges nice and neat, I'm just trimming away a triangle off each of the corners and then I'll be able to fold everything up nicely. So here's something that I went a little bit rogue. I remembered that my autograph book from when I was younger had a little bit of squish to the cover. So it wasn't perfectly hard. There was like a little bit of give there. So I decided to pick up a product that is used in uh, quilting and it's this batting material that I have on the screen right now also known as wadding and I'm gluing that to my chipboard pieces just so there's a little bit of kind of squish available there it's not as super squishy as mine was I maybe could have done a couple layers but I just allowed that to dry in place and then trimmed away any of the excess and now it's time to wrap the book so I'm just using Mod Podge glue here. I believe you could also use PVA and that would work just fine. I was just picking up what was on my craft desk at the time and I'm just laying everything into place. Again, just leaving a little gap between the front cover and the spine and then the spine and the back cover. And I'm using a scrap of my chipboard as my spacer to make sure I get nice even spacing. So then it comes to wrapping the edges of the book. I'm again just applying adhesive and then I'm using my bone folder to gently fold and press everything in place and I'm pulling it as tight as I can to make sure it's got a really nice snug fit and I will go ahead and tuck in the corners once I'm finished with each of the long edges. So what I learned during my research is that you should do the long edges first, make sure you've got everything smoothed down in place and then you want to work on the sides. So for those sides we want to tuck in those little corners where we trimmed off that triangle shape earlier on and just fold those in and then fold everything back and it creates the most beautiful professional looking finish. I couldn't believe how easy it was to follow these instructions and create my book cover. I think this was maybe the most surprising part. I figured that maybe I'd be able to glue some paper together and perhaps it would stick together and it would it would last, but creating the book cover, I was really impressed <laughs> with how easy the instructions were to follow and how well it all turned out. So here I've grabbed some pattern paper from my stash and I've cut it down to be slightly smaller than the cover. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that on the inside so we have a decorative front piece. This serves two purposes, I guess. It kind of glues our paper stack to the cover and also hides any of those edges where we folded in the book binding cloth. Now, I forgot to mention, if you didn't want to go through the process of creating the book binding cloth, you definitely can buy book binding cloth um, already prepped and good to go, or you could leave this unfinished. You definitely don't need to go through all of these extra steps, but I think it gives a really nice finish to everything. So I lined up my paper stack inside of my book cover and then I used a scrap of white printer paper just to make sure it caught any of that glue as I was adding some Pritt stick all over these edges. I used 
I don't know how many different types of glue were making this. It's definitely not necessary, but I wanted to use a glue that would have kind of a quicker dry time for that front and back cover. So as you can see on screen, the book is fully functioning as an autograph should. The pages are opening, everything's holding together really nicely and it lays flat. You could definitely stop here, but I decided to add some personalization. I used an SVG file, which again, I'll link to in the description. I purchased it from Etsy and it enabled me to create these transfer pieces. So I have some uh, self-adhesive or iron-on adhesive glitter transfer uh, vinyl and I'm using the iron again it really got to work out to just layer up each of these pieces for the most part I'm following the instructions on the adhesive vinyl however I did notice that it says with the glitter you shouldn't layer it up like I'm doing here but I didn't read that part of the instructions until after I'd already cut everything using my scan and cut machine and I definitely wanted to have this effect of the different colours. So we've got the initials of each of my nieces that poke through or at least the nieces who are coming with us on this trip and then the glittery bows with the uh, polka dots. So for this DI try, I have to say, I think it was a brilliant success. The books held up wonderfully. Here's a couple clips of them being used. We had a fantastic time at Disney. And if bookbinding or book decorating or book cloth making, whichever aspect of this DI try, if you haven't given it a try yourself and you want to, I definitely encourage you. It was a lot of fun and actually a lot easier than I expected it to be. Again, I've got links in the description below to the people who gave me advice, um, albeit they don't know that they did, I just went and watched their YouTube videos, and also the places where I purchased the designs I used for decoration. If you're new here, then I'd love to have you subscribed. Go ahead and tap on that logo on screen right now to subscribe to my video, and I hope to see you again next time. That's all from me today. Bye for now.